Etymology, the study of the origin of words. In this video, I will be going over the etymology of all European countries. And before you get mad about what countries I will be covering, I will be covering all countries in alphabetical order. And according to this model, that also includes Turkey, Kazakhstan, the Caucasus and Russia, because they all partly lay in Europe. I will only be doing UN recognized countries, so no Catalonia and Kosovo. Sorry, please do not dislike the video because of this. I'm trying very hard not to make this controversial. It's just a fun educational video. Let's start with Albania, whose name comes from the Albanoi people, an Illyrian tribe that lived in the area of modern-day Albania and were first recorded by Greco-Roman geographer Ptolemy. The origin of Andorra, though, is a bit less clear. There are two main theories, that Andorra is derived from the Andesin tribe, whose name probably came from the Basque word Handia, meaning big or giant. And the second theory, that Andorra comes from a proto-Basque word meaning water. While in the Caucasus, Armenia has two names, Armenians themselves use Hayastan, of which Haya comes from Haik, who is the legendary patriarch of the Armenians and the alleged great-great-grandson of Noah, and Stan being a Persian suffix meaning place of. The English name for the country, Armenia, comes from the old Persian Armina. Armina probably comes from Aram, who was a descendant of Haik, who we just discussed. Austria comes from the German word Österreich, Öster meaning Eastern, and Reich meaning Rome or Empire. Back in the Caucasus, Azerbaijan's name is commonly accepted to come from Atropates, a Persian governor under the Achaemenid Empire, although some people think it could also come from the Persian words Azar and Payagan, meaning fire and protector, respectively. Belarus comes from Belarus, which means white rush. What makes these Russians white and other Russians not is not entirely clear. One theory suggests that the Russians living more to the west converted to Christianity before other Russians did. This made them white Russians, while the Russians in the east were black Russians. Another theory suggests that white refers to the color of the clothing the early Slavic people inhabiting the region wore. And although Belgium is a very new state, the name isn't. The name Belgium comes from the Roman province of Gallia Belgica which partly encompassed the modern-day territory of Belgium. An even newer country is Bosnia and Herzegovina, whose name consists of two parts, Bosnia and Herzegovina. Bosnia is commonly accepted to come from Bozona, which is what Byzantine Emperor Constantine VII called the area of modern-day Bosnia. He probably named it after the river Bosna, one of the main three rivers of Bosnia. Herzegovina's etymology is a bit more clear. It comes from the German word Herzog, meaning Duke, referring to Duke Stjevan Vokšić Kozatska. And although Bulgarians speak a Slavic language, their name is based on the Turkic Bulgars. The name of the Bulgars might come from the Proto-Turkic word Bulga, which means to mix or stir, referring to a revolt in this context. While up north, Croatia comes from the Northwest Slavic word for the people in the region, the Krovat. The origin of the name is unknown, but some theories suggest that the Slavic people in the region took it from a Gothic or Indo-Aryan word for these people. Down south in the Mediterranean, the Republic of Cyprus is named after the island it lays on. The ancient Greeks called the island Kypros, which is derived from the Mycenaean Greek Kuperitio. This later changed into Cyprus after the C went from a K to a S sound. While the Czech in Czech Republic comes from the legendary leader who brought the Czech people to Bohemia, Czech. His name probably comes from the word Czel, meaning member of the people. Up north, Denmark is a very complicated one to cover, because there's a lot of debate on the meaning of the name. It is unknown whether the Dan refers to the Dani people, an old Germanic word meaning flatland, or someone named Dan. The exact meaning of the suffix Mark is also unknown, but most people believe it means borderland. On the other side of the Baltic Sea, Estonia is named quite inaccurately. It is widely accepted that the Est in Estonia comes from the Esti people, who were a Baltic people group that lived south of what is now Estonia. Keep in mind, Estonians are Finno-Ugric, not Baltic. The Onia suffix is something quite unique to English, as it's got something along the lines of Estland in most languages in the region, such as Swedish, German, Norwegian, Dutch and Danish. Now let's go north to Finland, one of the hardest ones I'm going to have to do here. The English name Finland is pretty easy, it means land of the Finns, with Finns being the main ethnic group in the country. The origin of Suomi, the name of the country in Finnish though, are very unclear. One theory suggests it comes from Proto-Baltic Zeme, meaning land, while other people think it might have originated from the Proto-Indo-European word Gman, meaning man, similar to Gothic Guma and Latin Homo. Other people think the name might come from the Sami people, distant relatives of the Finns living in Lapland, while others think it might be derived from Suoma, meaning Fenland, or Snyunimi, meaning Fan Cape. No one really knows and it's very hard to find out, so we'll most likely never really know. What we do know for sure though is France, which comes from Francia, a historical name for the country, meaning country of the Franks. 
the Franks being a Germanic ethnic group from modern day Belgium and the Netherlands, who mostly created France how we know today. While all the way in the east, Georgian's name probably comes from Gurgan, which is how the Persians called the Georgians. This term might have come from the ancient Iranian word for the Caspian coastal region, Gorgan, meaning land of the wolves, while the name of Georgia in Georgian is Sakartello, meaning land of the Carthelians. The Carthelians being the historical inhabitants of the central Georgian region of Kartu, although this name is now used to refer to all Georgians. Germany is probably one of the countries that has the most widely different names in different languages. The English name Germany comes from the Latin Germania, which was a name given by the Romans to the tribal people east of the Rhine River. The German name Deutschland comes from Deutsch and Land. Land meaning, well, land and Deutsch being derived from Old High German Geotisch, meaning belonging to the Geota people. The Geota people being a name used to distinguish the people speaking Germanic languages from the Latin speaking Romans. This information is needed to understand where Geota comes from, Theodiskach, which means popular. This in turn comes from the Proto-Indo-European word Chute, meaning people, which is where the Teutonic and Teutonic order came from. Down south to Germany's holiday resort country, the English name for Greece comes from the Latin Graecia, which similarly to how Francia means land of the Franks, means land of the Greeks. This is based on Graecus, the son of Pandora II and Zeus. It is unclear though why the Romans called the Greeks this way, since the Greeks referred to their land as Hellas, which comes from the name of the son of Zeus and Pera, Helen. Meanwhile in the Middle East, you might hear something along the lines of Yunnan, Yawan or Yunnan. This is because the first Greeks the Persians got in contact with were the Ionians, which they called Yona. Eventually, all Greeks were referred to as Yona by the Persians, and they spread this name over the Middle East and other Islamic regions. Up north, in Central Europe, Hungary's name comes from Latin Hungaria. The H in this most likely comes from the Huns, while Hungary comes from Greek Ungroi, which itself comes from a proto slavic word which comes from the Turkic Onogar tribe, who together with the Bulgars root parts of Eastern Hungary. This is just the English word for the country though. The Hungarian word for Hungary is Magyarorszak, which comes from Magyar, meaning Hungarian, and Orszak, meaning country. Magyar comes from the Magyari people, who were what is now seen as one of the major Hungarian semi-nomadic tribes. Magyar in Magyari most likely comes from Mank, meaning man or person, which is also the origin of the name of the Mansi people in modern-day Siberia, which shows the origin of the Hungarian people and language. And Eri most likely means lineage, which can still be seen in a modern-day Hungarian word for a husband. The next one is a very popular one, Iceland. The name seems pretty obvious, since it lays so far north, but when you look at the neighboring Greenland, you might start asking some questions. One theory suggests that the names were purposely swapped to prevent people from settling in Iceland, while others think Norwegian Viking Havna Vlokke Vilharsen named it Iceland because he saw a pack of ice in the mountains when arriving there. Down south, the Republic of Ireland, or just Ireland, is also called Eri in Irish which comes from Old Irish Eriu, which comes from Proto-Celtic Iveriu, which comes from a root meaning prosperous. Iveriu is also the source of the Latin name for the island of Ireland, Hibernia. Next is Italy, which obviously comes from Italia. Where this name comes from though is less clear. Most people agree that this Latin word for Greek comes from Oscan Viteliu, meaning land of young cattle. Although Greek historian Dionysius stated that it was named after a guy named Italus, who was also mentioned by Aristotle. Now let's do Kazakhstan, which actually partly lays in Europe, so I have to do this too. I already talked about the stan suffix, meaning place of in Persian, but what does Kazakh mean? While the Kazakhs are the main ethnic group living in Kazakhstan, the name of this group comes from the ancient Turkic word Kaz, meaning to wander. The name of the Slavic Cossacks is of the same origin. Back to the Baltics, Latvia's name comes from the Latvian Latvia, which is derived from the ancient Latgalians. Henry of Latvia was the first to Latinize the name to Ledigalia, or Lithia, which eventually evolved into names such as Latvia in English, Latonia in Spanish, and Lettland in German. And so we've come to Liechtenstein, the small double landlocked country sandwiched between Austria and Switzerland, that was actually named after the family that had historically ruled the principality, whose name comes from the Liechtenstein Castle in Lower Austria, which itself comes from German, in which Liechtenstein means bright stone. Again, back to the Baltics, we go to Lithuania, whose name is Lituva in Lithuanian. People, like with most countries, aren't completely sure about the exact meaning of the word, but most people agree it comes from the Litava River, which flows around the area that the first form of a Lithuanian state was founded. The name Luxembourg is very similar to that of Liechtenstein, as it is named after a family. And although the Luxembourg family would lose the country to the Habsburgs in 1477, the name state. It comes from Old High German Lutelinburg, which means little castle. Next is the former Yugoslav Republic of Macedonia, or just Macedonia, please don't get angry by the way. The name Macedonia just comes from the region of Macedonia, 
which is what most of the modern day state of Phyrum, along with parts of Greece, Albania and Bulgaria is located in. This on itself comes from ancient Greek Magetnos, meaning tall. About the next one, people aren't too certain. Malta's name might come from the Greek Meli, meaning honey, since the ancient Greeks called the island Melite, which means honey sweet. While others suggest that the name comes from the Phoenician word Maleth, meaning port, because Malta is perfectly positioned to be a port, let's be honest. A country that isn't perfectly positioned to be a port is landlocked Moldova, whose name is extremely simple. It comes from the Moldova River, which funnily enough doesn't even stream through Moldova, but actually streams through Romania. This is because Moldova is actually part of a historical region that also encompasses a big chunk of Romania. This river got its name from the legendary prince Dragos' dog, Molda, who drowned in the river. Monaco, despite its size, has a very old name that comes from the Greek colony of the same name called Monoikos, which means single house. While Montenegro's name comes from the Phoenician Mons and Niger, meaning mountain and black, thus Black Mountain. Funny fact is that a lot of countries also call this country Black Mountain, but in their own language, so not all countries got the name directly from Venetian. The name the Netherlands is what it says, nether meaning low and lands. The name of this country has a lot of different versions that are all translations of the same thing, Peba, Nederland, Nederlande, etc. The origin of Holland, which is sometimes also used to refer to the country, comes from Hotland, meaning woodland in Old Dutch. On the other side of the North Sea, Norway's name comes from Old English Noordweg, meaning way leading to the north. Some may say the Norwegian word for the country, Norge, has a slightly different etymology, but this is like usually not universally agreed on. The name of Poland is very straightforward, it means land of the Poles, of which Poles come from the West Slavic group Poland, who were the main ethnic group in the modern day territory of Poland. Nowadays people would mean any inhabitant of Poland when referring to someone as a Pole though, it is unknown what the origin behind the term Polan is. Down south in the corner of Europe, Portugal's name comes from a Roman Celtic settlement of Porto Scale that was located near what is now the city of Porto. Porto de Scale means Port of Cale in Latin, Cale being an ethnonym derived from the Calaisi people, who were also the origin behind Galicia. People slowly started to use the name of this settlement for the surrounding areas too, and eventually for the entire kingdom of Portugal. Romania's name also has its origins in the Romans, that should be no surprise. The name literally comes from Latin Romanus, meaning citizen of Rome or Roman. The first time someone used this term to refer to the region with this name was in the 16th century, probably because the people here spoke languages much more similar to the Roman languages than to the Slavic languages that surrounded the region. On the other side of the Black Sea, we get to the big cold country of Russia, whose name comes from Rus or Kievan Rus, a medieval state around the city of Kiev inhabited by East Slavic people. This state's name came from the people who founded the state, who are known as the Rus people. These people could have just been Slavic people, but a lot of people actually believe they were Vikings who founded the state from a training post on the Dnieper River. If that's true, the name probably comes from the Finnish word for Sweden, which on itself comes from the Old Norse word for the men who row, Rots. Now you also know some more about the etymology of the Rus part of Belarus. San Marino is probably the easiest one, it is named after its founder. Saint Marinus, Saint meaning holy and Marinus meaning of the sea, which makes sense since according to legend he travelled from modern day Croatia to Italy to found the country of San Marino. Also next to Croatia is Serbia, whose origins are very unclear. Some people have connected the word Serb with Russian Paserp, meaning stepson. Some people might also say it has connections to the Sorbs, another Slavic group of people but living in a completely different area. Sorry, there really isn't any solid evidence for any theory here. What we do know is Slovakia, whose name is derived from Slovenin, which was an old name for the Slavs, but because of Czech and Polish influence it changed to Slovak, which is why Slovakia doesn't sound like Slovenia now. But is why Slovenia is called the way it is. Slovenia also comes straight from Slovenin, again an old word for the Slavs. And since Slovenia has a small coast on the Mediterranean Sea, I can make this transition to the other side of the sea, to Spain, which obviously comes from España, which on itself comes from the Latin Hispania. The origin of this word has a couple of main theories. One is that it comes from the pre-Roman Iberian word Hispalis, meaning city of the western world. Another suggests that it comes from the Phoenician sentence I Spnia, which means the land where metals are forged. Another also surrounds the Phoenicians, since people have suggested that it comes from I Spania, meaning islands of rabbits, while another theory also suggests it may have come from Greek Hesparia, which means western land or land of the setting sun, which was used to describe Italy in a poetic sense by the ancient Greeks. Some people suggest Iberia will be referred to as Hesparia Ultima. The last theory suggests that Spain comes from the Basque word Espana, 
meaning edge or border, since Spain is on the edge of the European continent. On the other side of Europe is Sweden, whose name in English was loaned from the Dutch Sweden. The sweet in Sweden is derived from Old Norse Svear, which can be seen in the Swedish name for the country, Sverige, a compound of Svea and Rike, meaning realm of the Swedes. The etymology of Swedes isn't generally agreed upon, but a lot of people have suggested it comes from Proto-Germanic Sveonis, meaning one's own. A country with a slightly similar name is Switzerland, whose name comes from land and the Alemannic German Schweize, referring to an inhabitant of the city of Schwyz and its surrounding regions, one of the most important forms of the original Swiss confederacy. The origins behind the term Schwyz is probably derived from Old High German Svedan, meaning to burn. Turkey, which is actually partly located in Europe, has a Turkish name consisting of two parts, Turk being the main ethnic group of the country and the suffix ie meaning land off, which came from the Latin suffix ia. The word Turk actually goes back a long time, as Turkish people are a Turkic people group meaning they have at least partial Central Asian blood. The first time the term Turk or Turk was used was in an old Turkic inscription of the Gökturks. The origin of the word could either come from the Chinese Chielö or Chinese Tujie which was a name that the Chinese gave to the people living south of the Altai Mountains in Central Asia. Others may say it comes from Proto-Turkic Turi, meaning ancestry or root, while Ukraine comes from Proto-Slavic Yu, meaning within, and Krai, meaning either end, land or border. So Ukraine could either mean homeland or borderland. On the other side of Europe, the United Kingdom is just called that way because it is a United Kingdom. But that'd be a bit too easy. I will be explaining where Britain, England, Wales and Scotland come from, since that's obviously much more interesting than the United Kingdom. Britain is derived from Latin Britannia, which was probably taken from Greek Pretanike, which could have meant something along the lines of the painted ones or the tattooed folk. England comes from Engleland, which means land of the Angles, the Angles being one of the Germanic tribes that settled in Great Britain. The name probably comes from a pro-Germanic word meaning narrow or tight, which probably refers to the water near the area they came from. The Scot in Scotland comes from the Scotti, which was the Latin name for the Gaels, not to be confused with Gauls, and also the origin of Gaelic in Irish Gaelic and Scottish Gaelic, and Wales derived from the Celtic tribe known to the Romans as Volci. Later, the Anglo-Saxons would refer to all Celtic Britons as Welish. This later changed into Wales. Interesting fact is that the Wallonia in Belgium and Wallachia in Romania have similar etymologies. And so we've come to the last European country alphabetically, the Vatican City, which comes from Latin Civitas Vaticana, with Vatican coming from the Vatican Hill, of which Vatican again comes from Vaticinari, meaning to prophecy in Latin. If you've enjoyed this video, please make sure to subscribe to get notifications when I upload a new video. Also make sure to like the video to motivate me and leave a comment expressing your opinion down below.